Welcome to tonight's video on finding limits using tables and graphs. Um, a concept of a limit. Suppose you and a friend are walking along the graph of a function. Let's say the function is f of x equals x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And you guys are walking towards the point x equals 2 right here. And the question is, as you're getting closer to 2, what y value are you approaching? And if you look at the table, right here it's 3.99 as you get it, this guy's going up. And then as the other guy's coming down, notice it's 4.0001. So it looks like as x approaches 2, as these guys both approach 2, the y value is getting closer to 4. And so that's why it says it appears that as x is getting closer to 2, the values for the function are getting closer to 4. And we say the limit as the function approaches x equals 2 equals the number 4. So and here's how you express it in limit notation. And calculus is the study of limits and their applications. The limits are the foundation of the concepts that you will encounter as you move forward in calculus. So the first thing we do here is we describe the limit notation. So here you say the limit as x approaches a number of the function equals a number. And that's read as the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals the number l. This means as x gets closer to a but remains unequal to a, the corresponding values of the function get closer to L. So finding it using a table. So for example, here we have 3x squared. So if you use your graphing calculator and you go to y equals and then you type in 3x squared, then I gotta find the squared key here. It'll get there, squared. And then you go, now you want to set up your table so that you can put in the value. So you go to second function and table set, and you change this independent to ask. And then when you go to the table, when you hit second function table, notice it's blank. So you can put in the values that you want. So for example, you could put in 3.01. And you hit enter and it gives you the value for y. And let's say you typed in 3.001. Notice it gives you more values, and 3.0001, it gives you another. So those are numbers bigger than 3. What if you did numbers like little smaller than 3, like for example, 2.9. Notice when you hit enter here, you hit enter, it gives you 25.23. If you do 2.999, do one more. Then you get 26.82 and you do 2.999. Notice 26.982. So notice if you look as it's just bigger than 3, it's 27.00, almost 27. And if it's just smaller than 3, it's almost 27, it's 26.98. So we say the limit as x approaches 4 of 3x squared, actually, sorry, I put in the wrong numbers. I should have done 3.99 and 4. We'll just change this here. Instead of saying as it approaches 4, we'll say as it approaches 3, since that was what I did. We say it's equal to 27. So now you can do the same thing for 4x squared and x approaches 3. So notice here, 
you change it to 4x squared. And then you, when you go to the table, it'll ask you for the values. Your other values will still be there, but it'll change them in terms of what you have. So you have to type in the numbers. And since we already did it as it approaches three, notice the numbers are there. And so notice as it approaches three, this is going towards 36, right? 2.99 almost. And this is a little bit more than three and it's going to 36.002. So we say the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x squared is 36. Now for the trig functions, when you use your calculator, understand that you have to change the mode. For trig functions, you want it in radian mode. So if your calculator is not in radian mode, put it in radian mode. So you go sine x. So you got to type in sine x. divided by x and then you make your table and you want to get it as close to zero so like negative point zero one then you go negative point zero zero one I must have put it wrong negative point zero zero one there you go one negative point zero 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 one notice one and then if you do a little bit more than zero so like point oh one and then point oh oh one Notice it's going towards the number one as it approaches zero. Notice when I put zero in, it gave me an error because that's not allowed. But it's going towards one. So we say the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is one. We'll do the next one, cosine x minus one over cosine. So notice one thing is we have an expression in the numerator, so we have to put it in parentheses, cosine x and then minus one, like that, and then divide it by x. And then we do the table, and notice it'll already change the values for us. The zero shouldn't be there. So notice 0 0.005, and then 5e e to the negative fourth means it's 0 0.00005. So notice, as you look at these values, as they're getting closer to zero on both sides, it's equal approaching zero for y. So that's how you make the tables on your calculator. So the next part, so the next part is about using the graphs to find the limits. So the limit as x approaches four, of the function, we'll notice here it's going towards the value seven. Now if I want f of four, that's where the dot is. f of four is equal to two. So I'll do look at the same thing, same graph, but now negative two. As x approaches negative two of the function here, it's five. But then f of negative two, where the dot is, is equal to three. Let me just zoom in a little bit more so I can get more of the picture in. All right, so finding the limit by graphing the function, graphing a piecewise function, 2x minus 4 if x does not equal 3. So that means the line starts at negative 4 and goes up to over 1, up to over 1. And then when it's equal to 3, there's a hole there because it's not... So at 3, 2, and that goes up 2 over 1 and continues on. So here's our graph, right, with the hole there. And then when x equals 3, it's negative 5 right here. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 of the function is 2, because that's the y value approaches 2. It's different than if I asked you what's f of 3, which would be negative 5.
So the same thing here. We'll graph it. If x is not equal to 2, it's 3x minus 2. So we start at negative 2 and go up 3 over 1. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. So at three, at 2, 4, there's a hole. And up 3 over 1. So we graph our piecewise function. And if it equals 2, it's at 1. So there's a dot at x equals 1. So the limit as x approaches 2 of the function is 4. If I were to say what's f of 2, it would equal 1. There are left and right hand side limits, meaning as the approaches from one side. So if we graph x squared plus 1, sorry, let's get back to there, x squared plus 1 if x is less than 1. So for all the numbers less than 1. So the first thing I would do is see, well, what is the value at 1? 1 squared plus 1 is 2. So at 1, 2, I'm going to put a circle. And then 0, 1, this is going to be like a parabola that goes like that. And then for the other one, when it's greater than 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. So at 4, and then it's a line. like that. So if you look from the right hand side, from this side going in, it's approaching 4. If you look from the left hand side coming in, it's approaching 2. So whenever the limits from the left and right are not equal, then we say the limit as x approaches that number does not exist. In order for the limit to exist, the limit from both the left and the right have to be the same. So if you look at the graph below, the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right, right here from the right, negative 2 is negative 2. The limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left is 0. The limit as x approaches negative 2, since the left and right are different, we say it does not exist f of negative 2 is the dot, which is negative 1. So in order for the limit to exist at a certain point, the limit from the left has to be the same from the limit from the right. All right, that concludes our video for this evening. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if there's any questions, please feel free to ask in class. Have a good evening.